Set their hope in God and not forget the works of God and to keep his commandments. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart right, uh, aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The other day, Gene and I were in town, and you can you can see anything on a, on a t-shirt or a bumper sticker. And uh, we were following a, a, a car and, and had stopped at a light and he had two bumper stickers on the back of his car so I was I was reading the one on the left and it said something like um, freedom is, is religion freedom of religion is determined by the distance uh, between church and state so I tried to try to think about that well what is he saying you know, I'm sure he's making some political statement but the one on the right is the one that really uh, got my attention and it said something like this. It said, God was my co-pilot, but I crashed in the Andes Mountains and had to eat it. And I thought, my goodness. You know, I thought that man said, what's he saying? What's he saying? But God was my co-pilot. So obviously he was uh, making a mockery uh, of the Lord. And so I want to tell you, only, only in a nation like ours, can you say anything and do anything because we have so many freedoms that all of a sudden they are, I would say they are abused. And so we're going to talk about today the, and what we would title our lesson is Memorial Day. But if we read this, this Psalm 78 in, in chapters 1 to 8, it seems like the writer is continually reminding us for eight verses 
that we need to remember uh, who God is and what he has done for us. Brother James sang the song, Glad to be an American. I'm, I'm glad to be an American. I know you are too. Uh, in my opinion, in my mind, and, and for a lot of people this sounds corny, but it, it is the greatest nation in all the world. We're great, I believe, because uh, in my heart, I believe, because we were good. Uh, we put a lot of emphasis on, on, on serving the Lord. And I heard a preacher preach one time from the book of Revelation, and he did a whole series on it. And uh, he was, in, and this is probably back in the 80s. He was talking about, he took Revelation, the book, and he talked about there's some several figures and, and different beasts and different symbols in the book of Revelation. And he brought out, there's a, there's a verse that talks about the eagle, and he said that was America. There's a verse that talks about a bear. He said that was, that was Russia. There's another verse that talks about, I believe it's a lion. He said that was Persia. And so, you know, over, over, you know, so many years ago, I'm not sure that's exactly uh, how it is, but I'll tell you this, God is, is sovereign. And he put our nation in a, in a particular place, and he blessed us in a particular way because, uh, because he's good. And he loves us, and he had a particular uh, mission for, for us to accomplish. The people of Israel continually, as you read the Old Testament, they continually uh, would, would turn away from God, and then they would turn back to God. We go back to the book of Judges, and it just seems like every time you turn around, uh, there were, they, the Israelites would, would disobey God, and he would lead them into some type of oppression, and then he would raise up a judge and deliver them. And this happened several times in the book of Judges. And so I want you to understand what we're going to talk about is what happens when we forget or when we don't remember uh, who God is. And this, this passage talks about the importance of, of remembering. Now, Memorial Day, I, I read several years ago how it came into being and several things were involved. Uh, if I remember right, a lot of it had to do with it was after, after the Civil War. A time to remember those, those men who had who had perished in, in the Civil War. And then at one point in time, it became a time for us to remember all those family and friends who have died on any occasion. And then later on, it was we were, we were remembering those men who had, had, had died in, in, in service to their country. And so uh, it's, it's a time, the whole, the whole point of Memorial Day is a time for us to remember, to remember the sacrifices and, uh, and uh, the things that we went through as a nation. To remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice so that, so that we can be free. And so I, we want to look at the sacrifices that God has made for us today. And I want to share a few things that we need to remember about the Lord. First of all, I think our passage teaches us that remembering God brings hope. And he said, he tells us that they might have hope, that hope may be found in God. And so we seem to be a, a, a society that has lost hope in a lot of places. Every 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 day we wake up and the, the news is horrible and the terrible things are going on and, and it just seems like every every issue every place in our life there's just chaos and problems and we we, we look up to these these leaders and these people and and many times they're they're fussing and fighting amongst themselves and it just we just don't have a lot of hope it seems. And so for the Christian and for the child of God, our hope today is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's where our hope comes from. And the Bible says our hope comes from the Lord. I mean, when, when the whole world seems to have no hope, and every time we place our, our trust and faith in something material or in someone, they let us down. But God doesn't let us down. And so we can have we can have a, 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 a eternal hope in Him. And that's what the psalmist is talking about right here. He said, you know, of all the things that happened to the Israelites and to the people of God, uh, one of the things that, that they need to uh, focus on is that they are a people of hope. Been through the Red Sea, been through the plagues in Egypt, all the things that happened to them without water, without food, God continued to bless them and supplies their needs and gives them protection. And so every, every conflict they face, God delivered them. And so that should give us hope as a people. And as, 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 as the people of God. So when we remember God, we remember who He is, 
it should bring us hope. When, when everything seems to be uh, crumbling around us and when the chips are down and we seem to have no strength left in ourselves, we can, we can depend on God and we know that He gives us hope. Remembering God also, we realize, brings instruction. Now the Bible tells the people of Israel, and He's taught them throughout the Scriptures, uh, fathers were to teach their children, and He says right here, you know, as we learn the principles, the commands, the laws, the instruction of God, we learn them from our fathers. We will teach them to our children, and they will teach them to their children. And so we talk, we're talking about principles. We're talking about the things of God. And so when we talk about what God has done for us, remembering Him, how important it is to remember Him, then we need to talk about God's instruction. He never leads us astray. He never makes a mistake in His Word. There are no, there are no uh, errors. There are no mistakes in God's Word. There cannot be any mistakes in God's word because it is the word of God. So we read we read the scripture, we read our passage here today, and it says that these these words, these instructions, uh, they are given to us so that we can share them with others. And it seems like everywhere we turn, a lot of places today, that you talk about the scriptures, you talk about the importance of God's word, his commandments, his statutes, his principles, many of those things are taken away. And our children do not know those things. And then, you know, they don't seem to be being passed on. Uh, the Word of God is important, isn't important to a lot of people today. So remembering God brings instruction. We ought to tell our children. In the Old Testament, the, they were instructed, the parents were instructed to teach their children when they got up in the morning, as they went through the day, as they sat down at mealtime, as they laid out not to go to bed. They were constantly before their eyes the, 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 the commandments and the instructions of God. And so I think this is one way we've forgotten God. We've forgotten His instruction. When He says, Thou shalt not, He means, Thou shalt not. And there are no loopholes. There, no, there are no ways around. There, there's no way to, to circumvent what God has told us to do. To not do that is to disobey Him. The Bible says disobedience. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So, I mean, you're talking about, he's pretty serious about that. He's pretty serious. I met some, uh, believe it or not, it was when I was probably just out of college and when I was taking a night class. And, and I went to uh, the night class one night and there were three women that sat, we sat at big tables and they were sitting across from me and I was talking to one of them. She had this crazy necklace around her neck and I said, well, what is that? She said, well, that's an amulet. I said, what is that? She said, I belong to a covenant. I said, oh, like to be a nun? And she said, no. She said, I'm a witch. Now, she looked like a witch, but I didn't, didn't tell her that, I thought. But, but who am I to judge? But anyway, I said, for real? You're, you're I mean, a real, I mean, broom ride, cauldron stirring, card carrying witch. She said, I'm a witch. And my two friends are witches. So the next night, I didn't sit at her table, brother. <laughs> I tell you what, but she admitted to that. You know, you think about it, this. This is the day that we live in. You say that that's kind of odd. You said we've come a long way from, you know, Elizabeth Montgomery and Bewitched, I guess. But you know, this good grief to admit that, and that's what we see today. And a lot of us become we have forsaken and forgotten the instruction of God. We don't we don't tell what God says about that. We don't we don't we don't share what He says about about the truth about things and about how rebellious can rebellion can lead to lead to terrible things that can happen. Remembering God also brings faithfulness. God is faithful. He is a faithful God. He keeps His word. He keeps His promises. If He says He's going to show up, He shows up. If He gives us instruction in His word, He means for us to keep it. He promised to take care of us. He's going to take care of us. And throughout his word, he talks about he is faithful. And because he is faithful, we should be faithful. We should be faithful. Faithful to the cause of Christ. Faithful to tell others about Jesus. Faithful to his house. I heard one guy say one time he was preaching about, you know, coming to church and being a part of a church. And, and the Bible says the church is, is the bride of Christ. And how would you feel, fellas, if, if someone came up to you and said, you know, said, I really, I really appreciate you and I think a lot of you, but I can't stand your wife. And a lot of people do the same thing about God and, 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 and his church and his bride. And so I want, I want you to understand being faithful to God means being faithful to his house. 
being involved and, 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 and being a part and having a commitment, having some, some, uh, some loyalty to the cause of Christ. Being faithful. Being faithful. Jean and I, when we go to Fairfield, uh, oftentimes it's on, uh, on Saturday, sometimes we go and, and we cut through uh, Alto 291 to Elkhart. But there's a little church, and it's a seven day Adventist church, and you know what? They have, uh, we go by that church sometimes on Saturday because that's the day that they meet. But uh, man, they've got several cars in front of their church on a Saturday, worshiping God. You go to some of the, the Mid-Eastern places, and even in America today, and you look at the the, the uh, religion of Islam, the Muslims, and they are committed to what they believe, praying three or four times a day to face Mecca, and oftentimes willing to, to, to die in a, in a holy war for, for their cause. Uh, you look at many other groups, and the, and the faithfulness, and the, and the steadfast faithfulness, almost radical, then we look at Christianity in America today, and you know, it's kind of a hit and miss for a lot of people. It's kind of a hit and miss. Someone said, you know, in one of the latest statistics said about 50% of Americans today have no church affiliation at all. And when they check religion, they check none. None. No religion. No, no belief. No, no commitment to anything. No even focusing on any kind of higher power. And so remembering God, I believe, brings faithfulness to the Christian. And we need to be faithful. As we talk about our grandfathers and great-grandfathers and how faithful they were to the house of the Lord, how faithful they were to the cause of Christ. Billy Graham talks about when he was a young father. And he, wasn't, he wasn't a Baptist. He was raised a Presbyterian. But he, he came home one afternoon, and there were, there were I guess it was buggies and cars all over the yard. It was in the middle of the week. And he went inside, and his father was a was a leader in their church, a worker in their church. And there were they had had they had just gathered together to have a prayer meeting in the middle of the day, because there was a, there was a need, there was something they needed to pray about, something they needed God to to, to answer a, a request, and so they had gathered to pray. In our church here, years ago, we used to have a whole revival time. We would have a thing, something called cottage prayers, and. And I hope that it was, it was a prayer meeting. I never was a part of it. That was too long ago. But, but supposedly the, the, the idea was that the church members would gather together in different homes before revival meeting and have prayer about, about the revival service. That God would do work. God would change hearts and change lives. And when we remember God, we talk about what he's done, his goodness. We have to focus on one of the attributes that he is faithful. Always been faithful. And I've known people, and you've known people who were once faithful, but they're not faithful now. I go back to my home church sometimes, and I've told you this before, but it seems like every time I go back, well, where's, where's so-and-so? He was, he was a deacon. He was a worker in the church, taught Sunday school, and, well, he just, he just, he's not faithful anymore. He doesn't come. He doesn't come. What do you think your wife would say? If you told her, honey, I'm, I've been faithful and I really love you, but I've decided to take one night off a week and go visit my girlfriend. Just one night a week. I'm going to be here the rest of the week, but I'm going to take one night. We're going to go. We're going to have dinner. I'm going to spend the night with her, get up and have an early breakfast, and I'll be back home. I think we'll be going. That's not faithful, is it? There's not a woman here that would stand for that in her marriage. And yet we expect God to say, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be part time Christian. We're gonna be faithful once in a while, but we're gonna, every now and then we're gonna we're gonna sneak off. We're gonna kind of let our let our hair down, do what we want to do. But then we'll be back. We'll be back. But God is faithful. He expects us to be faithful. Remembering God also, we need to realize brings salvation. God is the only way for mankind to be saved. The psalmist recognized this when he talked about God's goodness. He talked about God's strength. He talked about God's deliverance. He talked about God's salvation and all of the conflicts they faced in the wilderness. He talked about how important it was for the people of God to follow him and be faithful because in him was the only way of salvation. Think about that. If you, and there are a lot of good people, if you 
depend if you were the best person that, that you, you knew I'm talking about you you went to church you sang you you, you gave offerings you, you didn't curse you didn't drink you didn't do any of these things vices that people have today I mean you, you gave money to, to every uh, charitable organization every every television commercial you saw that had a need you, you supplied and met some of those needs 1995 a month you did that a hundred times a month you raised your family and you you did not mistreat them you raised them to children to adulthood and they they were they were made something of themselves with all of that without Christ you would still be doomed to an eternal separation from God he doesn't, he doesn't base our salvation on our good works. He doesn't base our salvation on our parents' good works, and our grandparents' good works. So when my father was a, was a pastor, my grandfather was a deacon, you know, church every time the doors were open, that doesn't count for us. The only thing, the only thing that can bring us salvation, the only thing that can save us is our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's the only way. You know, and that's the story that's been told since the time of Christ. The only way you and I can have any type of relationship with God is because of Jesus Christ. I hear people talk about, well, you know, uh, God upstairs or the man upstairs or, you know, he's looking over us or he's watching over us. And, and they, I don't know, they speak of him as if he's some type of genie that they take him out and, you know, and, and use him when they need something and they put him back and put him away. One thing we need to remember whether we're talking about our nation or our individual lives is that God is a merciful God. And he's long-suffering. And he gives us many, many, many chances. But you know what? The Bible says when, when he begins to act and when he begins to, to pour out his whatever it is, his wrath or, or his judgment, when that begins to happen, there's no time. Because it happens quickly and it happens suddenly. The Bible says in the, in the in the, in the blink of an eye that Christ will return and all of those who do not know him are going to be eternally separated the Bible says to, to an eternal hell that was prepared for the devil and his angels but also for all of those who reject the salvation of Jesus Christ so we talk about things that we remember we talk about how God is good and how God loves us and we talk about how and that's what the, the writer of the people for here has tested he has delivered them time and time again where they're to tell their children they're to remember they're to constantly be before them talking about God usually the only way we hear about God today is in some type of blasphemous profanity and we hear a lot of that today and that's a shame especially for a nation who I still consider to be somewhat of a, a God fearing and a Christian nation especially from a group of people who are so intelligent, are so smart, you know, are, are so wise in a lot of ways that we would we would forget about the one who gives us our every breath, every beat of our heart. When I went into the hospital last week, week before last, and I was in the emergency room, I, I one of the questions and just it kind of took me by surprise. You know, you're laying there and they're they're Give me all this stuff and IVs and everything, and two or three people came in at once, you know, and they had kind of a questionnaire and they were asking several things about my family, about my health, about things like that. And they said, Mr. Eastling said, if, if something happens, that you want us to try to revive you? And I thought, you know, here I am, lady, maybe having a heart attack, and you're saying, if something happens, I said, well, yeah, would you would you give it a shot, please? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, what what would you say? I haven't really thought about that yet. I haven't really thought about it. But if something happens, you want us to try to revise it. Yeah, I mean, do what you can. And Gina's like, wait a minute, don't answer too hasty. <laughs> but you know what? Whether we have a choice like that or not. Our life is in God's hands. Amen. Every breath, every beat of our heart, God gives us those things. And 
we talk about what we're going to do and where we're going to go and and this is just ways I think that we've forgotten about the Lord. So, so I'll tell you what, it's a time to focus on the Lord. And we need to remember. We remember what God did for our fathers, our grandfathers. We remember what God did for the people of the Old and New Testament. We see how the miracles that God did, just the protection he gave. And I think God still does miracles today. Many times we can't see it, but, but I think he's still working in our, in our lives, protecting us, watching over us, making things happen according to his sovereignty. Just like our nation, just like America, he's put us in a, in, a, in a strategic place for the whole world, I believe, to be exposed to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible does talk about it in the book of Revelation. It talks about seven churches in the beginning. There's several churches mentioned in Asia Minor there. But he, God wants, and he wanted me to listen. He said, here's what's going to happen. If you forsake me, and rebel against me, I'm going to take away the candlestick. I'm going to take away the light. I'm going to take away the testimony uh, of you as a church. If you refuse to be faithful and follow me, be committed to me, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to take away your place. The Bible says where to be sought light. He said, listen, he said, you know, a situation like that, a church like that, the light has gone out. And God said, I'm going to, I'm going to take it away. I'm going to take you away. And you won't be that light that you need to be. And so it's kind of like what God tells us today. We either use what God has given us or we lose everything. We either, we either are faithful to God or He will not be you know, watching over, I guess, protecting us or providing for us. And so the people of Israel, and the psalmist said, you know, God had been had done so many things for them and brought them to certain places and all the things that they saw. We think, you know, if we went through the wilderness and we saw the party of the Red Sea, we saw the plagues and how God delivered his people, we saw water from the rock, we saw the, the, the brass circle on the pole, all those things that happened, the manna that came every day, you know, to be fed, to feed the people. We think if we saw all that and went through that, then we can have faith. But the Bible says that's not the case. That's not the case. Hearts are hardened and they can't be broken by a miracle. Only by, the God, only by God's Holy Spirit. So, so as we think about what God has done for us today, let us remember that He is good. He is loving. He is faithful. And He is the only one that provides for us the salvation. The only one. The only one. And I'll tell you what, if you'll trust Him today and believe on Him today as your Savior, then you're not going to worry about tomorrow. You're not going to be concerned with all the chaos and all the disorder we face today. We know that God's in control. We know that God's in control. A story that you've heard many times probably, we talk about the pilot, co-pilot thing. There was a plane flying you know, across the, across the United States, and they came into a storm, and a little kid was on there, you know, and People were, people were worried, people were praying, people were crying, and it was just a, a bad storm. The plane was all over the place. If you've ever been in a plane like that, some people were getting sick. And there was a little, a little boy, I don't know how old he was, 9 or 10, 11 years old, you know, and he was coloring on his coloring book or whatever he does, you know, and someone said, well, aren't you afraid? Aren't you, aren't you scared? I mean, it's, it's bad, it's bad. He said, I'm not afraid because my father is what? He's the pilot. Life gets bad. Life gets chaotic. Storms of life come, and everything seems, you know, uh, terrible. Everything seems uh, bad. It seems like it's the end. But you know what? God is in control. He's in control, and we can trust Him. And my friend, I'll tell you what the Bible tells us: it's appointed a man once to die, and after the judgment. So, if you're thinking about that today. Thinking about death, you're thinking about, I'm telling you, when they ask you, do you want to be revived? You certainly think about that. But you know what? Even when you face that, you know that God's in control. He has power over all those things. We know to be absent in this world is to be present with the Lord. The Bible says to live as Christ and to die as gain. And so that's important. That's important that we think that. So I want to encourage you today, if you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, today is the day. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Don't wait. You can start from this moment on, from this point on, and 
and your whole life will be different. There will be a different outlook. You will have hope, and you'll be able to be faithful to the Lord. And all those problems that you face every day, they're still going to be there, but you'll be able to deal with them and handle them in the right way. Some people are so upset and so nervous and so just just torn apart on their insides because of because of what's going on today. No hope, no peace, no calmness. And yet, if you know Christ, he provides all of that for us today. So I want to encourage you to trust him, to believe on him as your Savior. If you are a Christian, sometimes we kind of, I guess we kind of look around and we see what's going on. We see the storms of life, and we become afraid. But the Bible tells us not to be afraid. Don't be afraid because God is with us. He's in control. He helped. The disciples were afraid because of the storm. And all they had to do was look at Jesus, who was asleep in the same boat, you know, and, and yet they were afraid, and they woke him up. Said, "Don't you, don't you even care that we're about to die?" And he would say things like, "Well, why are you so afraid?" And I think God tells us that today. So let me encourage you to come to Christ. Whatever your need is today, if it's a spiritual need, a physical need, an emotional need, whatever you need today, come to Christ, and He can meet that need. Pray with me, please. Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for your Word and the power of it. And Father, as we focus this weekend as a day to remember, let us not forget what you have done for us. Let us not forget what you promised us. And let us not forget what you commanded us as your children. Lord, we thank you and we put all of our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, your son. We pray these things in his name. Amen.